This video on the property service and cache service is a much more theoretical look at what you can do in Google Apps Scripts. So it's not going to be tied to any specific project or task we're trying to do. It's really looking just at this feature in Scripts itself. So I do still have a sheet we're starting from just so I can easily get to the script editor and we can show some benefits. Open up the project I was using. Now, unlike most things, this is actually easier to see if we use the legacy editor. So I'm going to bounce back to that just for a moment. And of course, it's going to ask us to try the new one. No, not right now. All right. Now I say that's easy to see because if I go to file project properties, this does not exist in the new editor. But if we open this up, open up the project properties, we can see a lot of things just about the script, a lot of metadata, we would say project key, the script ID, different scope. So different APIs that it has access to a lot of this information is still visible in the new IDE. But this tab, the script properties, is not. However, we can still do stuff with it there, but here it's just a lot easier to see because we can add the rows visually. So I'm going to add a row. I'm going to call it email. Put my email in there. Now let's add another row, call it val1. Let's call it 10. Okay. Reasons I have personally used this was to store email addresses of managers that needed to have access or they needed to be granted editing access after using a script to lock rows as we've done in previous videos. And then I could just loop through and get all of those. We can access those easily. Let's do let props equals property service. You can see on the old IDE, it doesn't give you the autocomplete at the very beginning. There's these three different options, get document properties, script properties, and user properties. We're just going to be sticking with the script properties. You can look up more about document and user properties if desired, but script properties are bound to the script. All right, so let's get all the script properties. And uh, for right now, let's just get all of them. Let's save that, run it. And since we are in the old IDE, I do need to go to view logs to see those. But we can see it ran and it did pull them all. Val1 equals 10. Email equals spencer.ferris at gmail.com. So it is accessing those. We can also access those one at a time if we so desired. So right now, let's uh, just declare props to be the script properties themselves. And then let's do the log of get proper T email. Run that again. Wait a moment. <laughs> On the old one, it takes a bit to get the log sometimes. Perfect. And now it just output it as a string as we would normally desire. We can also set properties. So let's do props dot set property. What should we call this? All right, we're going to set a property. ran. Let's go look at the project properties. And there it is. It actually does add it properly. So that's why I'm using the new ID. We can just see it a lot easier. Okay. And if I do a log here, I'll now put all of them. I will do it again. Save run. Give it a moment for the logs to show up. So we can see it is there. So we have 
outputting all the properties, outputting all the properties again. We can also do props, delete all properties, then log it again. Give it a moment. All right, cleared it all out. And let's go ahead and add a property again. And log it again. So what I'm looking for here is things, why I'm using this is things that I want to persist beyond this actual instance of the script running. And now if I go to view, logs, there's the new one we added. Okay, so again, the reason we wanna use this is things that we want to persist beyond a single run of a script. That's gonna become really useful in some other features we're gonna look at using on change and other ways that you want stuff, especially hidden behind walls, basically, behind privacy walls. The cache service is very similar. We access it in the same way. Don't get script cache. The difference is that the cache automatically deletes itself, automatically clears itself after 25 minutes. I've used this when I was using Google Apps Script to process an enormous CSV file and would actually time out. So what I would do is I would check on every loop to see how far it's come since the start time. And after six and a half minutes, I stored the last value into the cache, stopped the script, and have the script automatically restart itself, automatically call itself again using the most recent value in the cache. But then because it was in the cache, it would clear itself after 25 minutes rather than me having to go through and do a, an automatic clear or a manual clear. So we can access this the same way. Let's just do a bunch of logs here. Let's just get all. Actually, it looks like we do have to call a key for all of them. So rather than doing a get all right now, let's cache dot put. And what should we call this one? Let's do BH for bounty hunter. And both of now we can log in. Get. I've used the new ID so much I forget that it doesn't auto correct stuff for me. Let's just comment these out so that's not in the way. Give it a moment so that it should show up in the logs. Perfect. Shut up there. All right, so property service will just continue to persist. The cache service will time out. So use cases I've had, um, having the sheet automatically open to the same place, the same sheet that you ended on. I can go ahead and do that for a future video. Uh, I had it when you set a checkbox, it would automatically uncheck after a certain period of time. In a couple of days, it would be unchecking. And then like I said, when I was locking rows, I would have a set of managers' email addresses that I would pull from to automatically get those back. Now, I wanna change back to the new editor just to show that this still works. All right, but if we go here and run through, we can see there's no thing here. So here's the scopes. We had that in the old IDE. Here's obviously the script itself. Triggers, executions, project settings. But here as well, there's nothing here where we can see the script properties. 
So let's jump back here and run this. And this time, obviously, it's cat. It's logging it as we go. So we can see it is fully running. It did all the sets, all the gets, all of that properly. So we can see it's fully running, even though we don't have direct access to the properties and the cache. Well, you never had access to the cache, but we used to have access to the property service. But we can still get there. You just have to use it through scripting rather than through a menu. Real quickly, before we're done, I do want to show that you can still interact with the sheet in this mode. So let's do, rather than logs, let's do call the spreadsheet. See, it's so much nicer when it does the auto fill for us we can still do it. All right, let's get the sheet. And I want to replace all of these with ss.get. Save that. Should ask me for permissions now. Yep, because now I'm actually accessing the sheet. So we can see it did output everything correctly. We can also do this in reverse. So we can have a email here. Okay, and this one I want to do really, really simply. Let's do props dot set property email. And then the value is going to be ss.getRange a2 dot get value. Then if we do log dot get properties, run that. Excellent. The Jedi Master Yoda was still held over, but it did add the email address from the sheet. So we can set to the sheet, get from the sheet, and these values will persist. So that's everything for this video about the properties and the cache service. We will be using this in future videos, but this introduction I felt was very important so we don't have to go over this. In the future videos, we can just start off. As always, please like, subscribe, and go ahead and interact and, and connect with me. You can comment, you can email me, you can find me on Twitter and LinkedIn. Happy to answer any questions and help you along wherever you need.